your children working together in one church. No? And uh, sooner or later, uh, my, my second son is coming. He's going to finish his, uh, 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 his study at the Bob Jones University. It is coming, I think coming March. And he will join us with our two children in Chayapum. So we will be, we will be together. We've been uh, separated for so many years, and it's hard, especially when you are separated when you're with your kids when they are are teen, in their teenage years. Oh, it's hard. You just don't know. You just ask, Mom. Never mind, Pastor Madong. <laughs> but usually, the most affected person is the uh, the, the, the wife. Okay. And you're do you are there at the mission field alone. Just imagine, uh, you cannot talk to the people so much because they cannot understand you. You cannot express what you feel to those people who are with you because they not they will not, they might not understand. Okay, and we need to stand. Every Sunday, every Wednesday, uh, in, during the visitation, you need to smile. You need to, see, to show to them that you are strong while your heart is suffering. And you are not hypocrite. You are, you are, not, you are not doing double face. We don't regret those things. But it's hard. It is not easy. But thank the Lord, by the grace of God, we are able to uh, continue and, and still doing our part in mission. I really appreciate your choir. They memorize the lyrics at the end. <laughs> I, the first, thing, the first uh, impression to me is, wow, they really memorize their piece. When I focus on their eyes, they are looking on the same direction. And I realized, oh, that's the secret. <laughs> that's the secret. That's good. No? And the music class, uh, the, the first music that was sung by Blue, uh, uh, no, the second music, the second special number, uh, those special numbers are good. Okay? Uh, I, I, my mind is thinking about who will tell, what's your title of the message? Are you single? You're married. Single? Who will tell what you feel? <laughs> Don't ask somebody. You tell her. That Jesus loves her. And I too love you. No. Dinadagyan ng paayan. Tonight is the night. Binibigyan ka lang namin ng tapang. <laughs> the second the second song is also wonderful just imagine if every one of us will pray that those lyrics seriously can you imagine if you're going to pray that seriously Lord here am I send me after you enlisted your name and you will tell the Lord, Lord, here am I, send me. We're going to create some problems, but that is a good problem. Why? Because there will be so many laborers. And God will take care of it. And we believe God will take care of the need. Because it was done, it, is, it has been done, and it will happen once again. So missions conference cannot be a missions conference without talking about the most, one of the most important part. We defend. We learn how to defend the gospel. We know the field that we need to conquer. But we also need to realize on how we can be partaker. Part. Financially is supporting world mission. Uh, one passage of the scriptures that was 
uh, being used is found in the very verse that we tackle the first night uh, the first night in Philippians chapter 1 verse 7 this is not the text uh, Paul says even as I meet it is meet for me to think this of you all Philippians chapter 1 verse 7 because I have you in my heart in as much as both in my bands and in the deepens and confirmation of the gospel ye all are partakers of my grace it means there are partners together and throughout the, the Philippians letter Paul expressed how the Philippian church is being involved in partnering in his mission since the beginning he mentioned in Philippians chapter 4 okay so what we are going to do tonight is we're going to focus on the answer on how we can feed the 7.8 billion people the title of our message is more this evening is the feeding of the 7.8 billion people how are we going to feed the 7.8 billion people with the true gospel of Jesus Christ which represent by the bread that was mentioned in John chapter 6 let us all stand let us open our Bible in Philippians chapter uh, John chapter 6 starting from verse 1 to verse 14 and we will look on this passage of the scriptures to help us understand on how we can be part of the feeding of the 7.8 billion people that is existing right now with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ let us read this from verse 1 up to verse 14 I'm going to read verse 1 please read verse 2 and we are going to read together verse 14 after these things Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee which is the Sea of Tiberias And Jesus, and Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? Verse 7, Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is that sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. There is a lad here which had five barrel loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks he distributed to the disciples and his disciples to them that were set down and likewise the fishes as much as they would therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten verse 14 and those men when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did said this is of the truth that the prophet that should come into the world father God in heaven do bless your word once again we thank you for gathering us together to talk about this important mission that you have entrusted to us and to bring the gospel of your salvation throughout the world Help us to realize our part in reaching these people for your glory. Bless these words. Bless your words, O oh Lord. I'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. This passage of the scriptures that we read a while ago is the only miracle in the Bible that was mentioned in the poor gospel. Okay? For gospel, the only miracle that Jesus performed throughout his earthly ministry mentioned in poor gospel. There are about 39 or 38 miracles. Somebody says 38. And if you are going to include the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ as one of his greatest miracles, we can assume that there are about 39 recorded 
miracles in the entire four gospel. But the only miracle that was mentioned found in the gospel is this feeding of the 5,000. Okay? So it is very important. We can draw out from here a lot of uh, things to learn, to equip us on how we can reach the world for Christ. Okay? Matthew chapter 4, verse 13 to 21 mentioned the incident Okay? Detailed incident. Mention the time, the five loaves, the two small fishes. Mark chapter 6, 32 to 34. Mention the incident. Mention the time, the five loaves, the two small fishes. The total number of the people as well that needs to be fed. Uh, Luke chapter 9. If you're going to look on chapter 9, verse 10 to 17. Um, in Luke, it was mentioned the incident as well. Mention the timing, the five loaves, the two small fishes, the number of men. Uh, the number of men only that need to be fed. But if we're going to look in John chapter 6, verse 1 to 14, there are some additional things that the Lord uh, led the writer, John, as the writer of this, so that we can see one important person in that means. Yes, it mentioned, uh, uh, it mentioned about the event. It is happened about the time before the Passover. Okay? So it means John chapter 4 is December. This time it is about April. So because it is the time of the Passover. So four months after uh, John chapter 4, we came here to this, uh, this scenario. So it mentioned about the five loaves, the two small fishes. The number of men to be fed. But here only in John was mentioned about the lad. So later we are going to focus our attention to the lad. So mission, missions conference is God's invitation to us to be part of that great miracle. Missions conference is God's invitation for the church to be part of a great miracle. Miracle. Do you follow me? It is a great miracle. We need to reach 7.8 billion people. About 178 countries with different languages, culture, and ethnics. It is an impossible task. So Jesus Christ is inviting us. Join me to be part of this great miracle. So first thing that we can uh, see is this. Number one is the intention. In every passage of the scripture, there is a divine intention. Okay? There is an intention. Every act of the Lord Jesus Christ is intended. Nothing is accidental or incidental with God. Do you believe that? Amen. Nothing is accidental or incidental to God. Everything is done with a purpose. The same with our, what we are doing right now. World mission, our emphasis is about defending the gospel. That is intentional. Why? Because we need it in our time. So Jesus Christ, uh, in verse 3, look in verse 3. Jesus Christ went up into a mountain. For what reason? If you are going to notice, he is going to perform one of the greatest miracles that was mentioned in the Bible. And he wants these disciples to see the entire situation and for the people to see what he is about to do okay it is an invitation uh, when you are in unelevated places your peripheral view or your point of view is widened right uh, if I'm going to stand here, I'm going to be limited with my uh, vision, what I'm going to see. But as, I, as the higher you go, the greater views you're going to see. You're going to see the things that you are not able to see. Uh, when I visited uh, Dubai, I was being privileged to go up to uh, the tallest, the, the future 
or the the future second tallest building in the world because they are building the tallest building in I think in Saudi Arabia but the Burj Khalifa is the tallest building in the world so I was able my wife and I was brought there by uh, the uh, host pastor and it's a beautiful place you can see the surrounding areas that was turned into a beautiful city just imagine the desert place becomes a beautiful city surrounded with skyscrapers different infrastructures that you will never see before beautiful so the same way Jesus Christ intentionally brought the disciples to a higher elevation so that the disciples will see the need. I hope for the past two nights you saw the need. We are trying to bring you into a higher elevation of your faith, of your vision. Seeing the world, seeing the need, seeing our prospect, beholding the world and the condition of the field. It is intentional. Okay? So number one is intentional. Maybe one of the reasons why God, that you are here this evening is because God is keep on looking at you. And talking to you about this plan in your life. Who can tell? Uh, when I was in, in when I was uh, in, in Chayapum, there is a a couple who attended our church. After a few years that they have been attending, he expressed to me. His spiritual condition. He told me, Pastor, I escaped the calling of God and went to Thailand. Not knowing in Thailand, we're going to meet you and remind me about God's calling in my life. You came here for a purpose to earn money. But God has a different intention. God brought you here. He built this church. He is trying to equip you. Not for nothing. There is a purpose, my friend. I, I, I haven't... I have been talking to you... I don't know why. I just realized that you are a pastor's kid. Right? I don't know. Who can tell? I don't know what is in your heart. I don't know what you have made or a commitment that you have made before. I don't know. I hope my, my prayer is this, that my son someday Will sit in a congregation like this. Six years old, he was six years old when he approached me and told me, Papa, God called me to be a missionary in Cambodia, to Cambodia. I was surprised. Six years old. So my younger daughter, she is three years old. She is she's very talkative. I told you. She is like the, 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 the youngest, is always curious about everything. And she asked a question. How do you know that God is calling you? Six years old child told me and told that her, his sister, someday you will know. Because he speaks in your heart. And he will speak in your heart. But the years go by, something changed. He doesn't 
He's still in Myanmar. He is still with me in Thailand. But a, but a different desire, passion. But my prayer is someday, God will use somebody to bring the fire that he has when he was six years old. And I believe it will happen someday. Because I am confident that what God that started in that little child's heart will be performed until the day of Jesus Christ. There's intention. I don't know why you're here this evening. I don't know why you invited me here. Actually, I'm planning to... to uh, I am spending my time uh, to, to visit my supporting churches that I have been visited for 10 years to remind them and to express to them my, our gratitude to tell them that what's happening in Thailand to bring to them the report that happens in the span of 10 years. And all of a sudden, Pastor Joel Madadlang Awa PM me and asked me if I can be uh, your guest speaker. I don't know. Uh, I asked the Lord, Lord, is it, it is your will? Just tell me. And he gave me the approval. Now I'm here. I just realized that my partner will increase. Amen. <laughs> I just thought that you just invited me. <laughs> but I thank the Lord that you brought, the Lord brought me here to learn so many things. To add knowledge on how I can improve my service in Thailand. To encourage me to continue on. One of the uh, useful words that I hear in Thailand is this. Thailand is the burying place of missionaries. It is the graveyard of missionaries. So, please pray, pray with us. Yes, I'm willing to be buried there, but not by the devil. Do you follow me? As of now, there are two missionaries that's been there for 10 years, 16 years, that is going to be dealt because of their failures. Two, we are praying for more. And the devil is trying to reduce us. And I hope I will not be one of the casualties in Thailand. There is an intention. God brought the disciples up into the mountains so the disciples can see the need. And for the people to see what Jesus Christ is about to do. Mission is the same. I hope your faith is increasing as we culminate this missions conference this evening. Secondly, I want you to remember the internalization. Internalization is, means that we need to internalize and learn. Not just to, to hear it, but to internalize it. Okay? The first one is, in, is the intention of God. The second thing is God wants us to internalize this event. Look on the, the following passages. There are a lot of questions that was, uh, uh, that was asked. Verse, nine, uh, verse 5 to verse 9. When Jesus lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company come unto him. He said unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? It is a question not because Jesus Christ doesn't know what to do. Because in the following verse, and this is said to prove him, 
For he himself knew what he would do. The first question that, was, that we can read in the Bible that God asks is found in Genesis as well. Okay? Actually, if you're going to read Genesis chapter 3, we can find the tone and the endearment that question have when, Jesus, when God says, Where art thou? Actually, that is a good theme for, for missions conference, a good message for a, good, uh, for a missions conference. Sometimes God wants us to ask, Where art thou, my child? Where art thou, my son? You're deep there in the Philippines. You're doing something. You are excited. You're committed your life. But now you're here doing nothing. Where art thou? It is not a question that is void of understanding. That lacks understanding. It is a question that draws the person who has been asked to realize what happened. The question that God asked during that time is a question of endearment. It is in a tone of close communion, fellowship. It is not because God did not know where Adam is. It is for Adam to realize what really happened. The severity of his disobedience. He does not realize that something was broken. And God said, where art thou? Here, the Lord Jesus Christ asks, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? Because he wants to draw something out from the disciple. Jesus asked some question that because he didn't know what to do, but to draw from us so that we can realize our incapacity to solve this problem. So in this line of internalization, we see two things. The probability in our part. Those questions reveal the impossibility in our part. How can we feed the 5,000 people, men, not counting the women? If you're going to put the women in this group, there are about 20,000 people that are gathering. Uh, usually, in a, a conference, in the church, I don't know why. The women is more in number than the men. The same here? How many ladies we have here? Just raise your hand. Ladies. Yeah. How many children? Oh. So the women are greater than greater in number with the men. So in the average, some scholar says there are about twenty thousand people present in that meeting. Well, just imagine Jesus Christ is asking the disciples. He is, they are up in the mountain. The people are scattered downward, and they saw the in, the the the, uh, the entirety of the need. And he says. 200 penny worth of bread is that sufficient? We are going to ask, how can we feed 7.8 billion people with the gospel? The same thing that we are going to answer. Where shall we find money? Right? Is that this question that you have? How can we support more missionaries? Our number is not increasing. So the impossibility is realized. God wants us to realize that Miracle happen, number one, in the platform of a need. It begins with impossibility. If it is possible, there is no need for a miracle, right? So when there is a need, just rejoice. If your need is great, just rejoice. Why? Because you're going to see a great miracle. Don't ask for a great need. It will come. But when it comes... You just, you just welcome it with an open arms and be ready to see a miracle. Are you in need right now? Do you have some great problem that you're experiencing in your life? Don't withdraw yourself from God. 
you draw closer to him. James chapter 1 verse 2, count it all joy because as we rejoice, the Lord is going to draw him closer to us and will bring great miracles. I've seen a lot of things that happens in our mission in Thailand. As soon as we arrive in Thailand, something happens to us. After five days, I incur an accident. I'm trying to drive a motorcycle because we want to buy a motorcycle. We have been walking four kilometers every day, two kilometers going to our school, walking back uh, 11 o'clock in the afternoon, back to our house, walking. And we are the only people that are walking in that community. As some of my neighbor asked me, uh, Ajan, Ajan is teacher, you can borrow my Camry. We are just there for five days. He is asking me to drive the Camry because they are, what you call this, they, they feel the need. And sometimes they, uh, we are going to meet them along the way and he will invite us to ride in their vehicle. So we're riding. So my, one, of my, uh, one of the members in the church that I'm uh, attending, uh, when, they re when she realized that I am about to buy a motorcycle, uh, she lent me the motorcycle to practice driving in Thailand. If you would want to die early, you drive in Thailand. One of the most dangerous road. It kills more uh, people than the noble corona virus. They don't they, they fear coronavirus. They don't fear the roads in Thailand. So I drove, I tried to drive the motorcycle. Okay? We, I passed the, the, that, that, that big street trying to, to, what you call this, to practice. Because I, have a, I, I can ride a motorcycle, but I'm not that good. So there is a curb, sharp curb, in, in that, in that uh, road. So I slow down, turn, make a turn. And the last turn, I told myself, maybe I can drive a little bit faster I went 60 when I hit that curb <laughs> about to end at the canal so I hit the brake and as soon as I hit the brake the motorcycle slid it hit my shoulder my clavicle bone it is good that the motorcycle owner brought the helmet because if I don't wear the helmet that, that day, I'm dead. I can hear the smash of the helmet. Bang my head on the floor. So I would stand up, check my body. A Thai person approached me. I don't know what he says. I say I'm okay. When I reach here, a bone is protruding on my clavicle bone. It doesn't went out. But it do like this. So that is the time that, wow. I almost collapsed. So he brought me back at our home. Went to an hospital. They gave me the, the uh, eight sling. The eight, the, uh, that, is, that is the only thing that they can provide. They don't operate. They don't put a metal in it. Sling. So every day I'm going to realign the bone. After I took a bath, I'm going to realign it. The following day, when I am in that condition, my wife wakened me up early in the morning and told me, Daddy, my stomach is aching. I need to be brought to the hospital. So I called my friend immediately, we went to the hospital and we find out that her appendix is about to, exp to, to burst and she need an immediate operation. So she was operated. I am staying in, in, in the same room with my wife. When the nurse visited us, 
they, ad they are administering the medicine to me. They <laughs> think that I am the one who is sick. I told him, no, no, no. My wife is the one. She is sick. Just imagine five days. It happens. But I haven't realized that God is preparing something for us. During that time, uh, that, is, that, is, that is 29. The following day, we need to go out from the hospital. Our bill is 40,000 baht. We don't have enough money for that. So we just prayed. 30th is the time that we receive our support. I checked the, the uh, ATM and I was surprised. My support jumped to two times of my regular monthly support. From 35 or 40,000 to 40,000 but to 80,000. My eyes <laughs> enlarged. <laughs> there is an enlargement of the heart but my eyes is like this. What happened? I checked the records, the statement. It is 40,000. Why is it that there is 80,000 baht in my account? So I went back. I told my wife, there is something miracle that happened. No one knows the bank account, my bank account. Only ABC knows it. I don't know where that money came. So we went out. Not, no death. We went out. Two weeks later, ABC wrote me a letter. Missionary Angeles, I just want to inform, we just want to inform you that we made a mistake. <laughs> we sent twice of your support. <laughs> and we need to take it back next month. I, I, I wrote back. I said, you don't make mistake. It is by God's intention to provide for my needs. I just imagine. Miracle happened. And it had still happening. And it will happen in the platform of a need. If there is no need, there will be no miracle. My clavicle bone was restored 100%. The doctor that, that checked it cannot imagine what happened. He practiced for 25 years. He says, this is the very first time I saw a clavicle bone restored 100% alignment. Who did it? There's only one God that can do it. I didn't buy the motorcycle. La Loma Baptist Church raised the money for 200,000 pesos to buy me a four-door pickup. Realizing that I need not a motorcycle, because I will end up my life easily. <laughs> and, gave, and they gave me the money. When there is a need, you just rejoice. Need is important, but our heart needs to be prepared. The provision is realized. Verse, verse 8. The Bible says, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here, which had five barrel loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? If you are going to calculate, even if you are going to give all our support, all our resources together for every month, it cannot meet even a fraction to reach the 7.8 billion people. Do you realize it? Even we're going to combine all the resources of the churches. It cannot meet the need. The provision is still little. Until now, the provision is still little. What is the Bible teaching us? Just continue giving your little. God is not asking for much. Because we cannot give more. Actually, if you're going to give your life, that is nothing. Just imagine, 
Who are you? That you can say, Lord, I think I can do great things for your glory. <laughs> I just imagine some people are so proud. Yeah. And say, I am the answer. If you combine all your brain, it cannot be, it cannot be compared even this, this amount. I heard some preacher, or I heard a story of some preacher preaching to his congregation, telling his congregation, even if you're going to combine all your brains, it will not reach this amount to compare to my... I don't know. You know him. <laughs> that some people are so proud. I don't know. But even though who, how good you are, that is so little. But the saying is still true. Little is much when God is in it. So there is a divine illustration number three. The procedure that leads to a miracle. Look here. There is a lad here. I don't know how the lad was brought to Jesus Christ. But I believe Andrew, who is so good in, in, in what you call this? In his scouting. Just imagine they are up. Do you imagine the, the situation? They are up in the mountain, so they saw everything. Maybe he saw the kid playing. He has a, a bag. And Andrew scouted it and went to that child. And asked the child, what do you have? I have five loaves and two small fishes. Oh, that, we can need that. That can solve a little problem. Come. I don't know why, why the Lord is. Keep on leading me to come to you, my friend. I don't know. So, here, only John mentioned about the lad. How did the lad was brought to Jesus? Four things we need to, re to internalize on these things. First, the lad is willing. He is willing to be loose. He is attached with his own agenda. Maybe he's just there to play. Maybe he's just there to stand behind her mother. Just imagine a lad. The age of the lad during that time is 4 years old to 17 years old. I don't know the bracket on how old is that lad. But usually, when there is a lad, it always, in that great and big meeting, it is always attached with their parents. That is their security. Now, uh, when the, have you seen a lad? When you see a child walking around the, uh, a, big, a big crowd, they usually grab the parents' pants and looking around, right? Because, because that served their security. The lad was willing to be loose. Sometimes we, Christian, are so secure in our position, in our situation, sometimes in our church, this serves as our security. These people that around us serve as a security. Your work, you are secure with your money. But we cannot feed the 5,000 people or the 7.8 billion people unless we are be willing to be loose. To loosen up. We are titans with so many things. The Bible says we are entangled with affairs of this world. So many things. God, that Satan's robbing us of our resources so that it can be used. I just imagine, some people can, can spend a lot of loads in their cell phone but when mission conference or mission giving is being introduced that's a big thing the same here we can spend a lot of money buying soft drinks that will cause us some problems in our life and because you are addicted don't you know that sugar is addictive and we're entangled with the fears of this world. So many things tighten our hands so that we cannot reach. We can feed the 5,000 or the 7.8 billion people if all of us will be willing 
to be loose. Your plan, your ambition, your loads, your credit. Some people, you've been, you put yourself in so many death. Gadgets, love affairs, and you can put more that entangle us. The child was willing to be loose. The child was willing to be led. Who led him to Christ? How did the lad came to that top of the mountain where Jesus is? Because Andrew went to him and said, Jesus needs what you have. <laughs> Did you see the situation? They're up in the mountain. The people saw everything. The disciples saw the illustration that Jesus Christ is about to do. I hope you will be willing to be led. There's a verse in the Bible in, in, in Psalms chapter 32, verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. What a wonderful guide we have. Amen. He will not lead us to destroy our lives. No. He will guide you and He will bring you to the right place. To the right lady. I don't know who, who she is, but God knows. Oh, somebody is pointing their finger. I don't know you, but He will lead you to the right direction. I don't know. Who can tell? I am not Andrew. I am not the Holy Spirit. But the Bible says, I will instruct and teach in the way which thou shalt go. But we must be willing. Or else he will drag us. That is a good word for dragging. Because the Bible says, He will accomplish what he intended to do in your life. You just stand there. Or sit. I am going to use you. Look here. I was in Ayal Kalapangasinan. I saw a farmer wants to bring his, his cow to be sold. They are trying to pull that cow to, 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 to be brought to the market. The cow is standing like this. The farmers are pulling. Two farmers are pulling. The cow do like this. <laughs> Sometimes you are doing like that. Give your tithes. <laughs> Give your faith promise. <laughs> Go to church. <laughs> so one farmer realized the situation. He says, I'm going to make a key. So he, he took a rope, make a nut, put the nut inside a bamboo put it on the nose of the cow <laughs> start to ring it as soon as the farmer pulled that rope immediately the cow becomes obedient it soapened his feet why? because he will lose his nose My friend, do you want to lose your nose? I was 21 years old when I realized that I need to give my life to God. I was in 1979. Six years. I, I backslidden for six years. Two times I almost met the Lord face to face. 
September, that is September 30. I was lying in the bed. I was sick. That the doctor cannot, doesn't know how to cure it. I'm drinking. I eat. When I eat, my stomach starts to have a severe pain. The only thing that I can eat is water during those times. So I was lying down. That is Sunday morning, September 30, 1985. I lose everything. My parents want me to study. I study four courses. They put me one in, a, in Trinity College as a scholar. I thought I was so bright to be a scholar. I just realized that they pay the scholarship so that I became a scholar. So I have power courses. You combine those four courses, that is four-year degree. So I was lying down, hopeless, nothing in my hands. Turn on the television. A preacher is preaching. Jimmy Swargat is preaching. And his text is Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. I didn't end the preaching. I turned it off. Kneel down. I will never forget that day. I just asked God, Lord, if there is grace that you can give me and mercy. My life is broken. It is ruined. But if you have enough grace for me, I'm going to give my life. I'm going to give my life. Sunday afternoon, I went to the church. I've been attending the church frequently, especially when there are camps. So they saw me, oh, Brother Angles, I have a big tail here. They said, oh, camp is coming. She's here. I went forward. Oh, that is for temporary. Those are the things that my uh, wife told me that they're saying. But they haven't realized that that day is the day that I made a commitment to God that, Lord, I'm going to give my life. Just use what I have. I have nothing, actually. But if you, can, if you have enough grace for me, just use it for your glory. God put something in my heart and in my, in my life to draw me to the right path. What a wonderful God we have. Amen. He wants to guide us. But sometimes we think that we are better than Him. The child was willing to be loose. The child was willing to be led the child was willing to be loaded. He got, Jesus Christ is not going to take that immediately. When God wants something from us, He wants it to be given willingly. He will not say, I want your heart. And He will draw you. And you cannot do nothing. That is foolishness. He wants it to be given willingly. So what, maybe Jesus Christ and the lad is standing. You have your five loaves and two small fishes. You have your life. You're going to eat that food. That is enough for you. And you have the right to eat it. But son, there are 5,000 men. About 10,000 ladies, 5,000 children. If you're going to give that, we're going to feed the 5,000 people. The lad was willing to be loaded. It is not his problem. 
He has a need. But what Jesus Christ have was imparted to the heart of this child. The same with mission. God is imparting and loading us something. And telling you, I need to reach Cambodia. And I want you to be loaded without burden. Not only to pray, but to give your life so that other people in Cambodia will realize and learn that somebody loves them the way you experience that love as well. So the child was willing to be loaded with a burden. And the child was willing to loan. He saw Jesus Christ did a miracle. He says, if that will be in my hand, I can do better. If your life is in his hand, he can do better. If your life is in God's hand, he can do better than what you planned to accomplish. So the child gave it to Jesus. Realize this. What we give is just a loan. Why? Because he will multiply it, and not only multiply it, he will give it back. Whosoever loses life, shall what? Shall find it. And whosoever, whosoever shall save his life, shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life, for my sake, shall find it. It means that it will be returned to you better. The money that you're going to write here and to be given to mission will be used. And not only used, it will be multiplied. And it will be given back to you. Do you believe that? Do you really believe that? Let's take an illustration. You can see it. Oh, okay. You just stand here. Just for a moment. Can you trust me? Will you trust me? This is the first time that we met. But can you trust me? I want to be a blessing to him. I want to give him one dollar. Who will loan me one dollar? I want to be a blessing. I will double what you are going to give to me. Who has one dollar? Come on. You have one dollar? Even, even uh, 40,000. Four thousand, four thousand, four thousand, four thousand, four thousand, real? Come on! No, 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 no! I don't want you. I, I. One thousand real. Four thousand, one dollar. Come here, come here, come here, come here. This is little. No, no, mom, come here. I want you to. I want everyone to see this illustration. Let us come into a mountain. Little higher. No, 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 no. No problem. This is only an illustration. And a good illustration. Okay. Can you lend me one dollar so I can bless him with one dollar because he is a good guy. Is it a blessing? Are you blessed? This is the key. If you want to receive a blessing, attend every services. Why? Because you don't know that someday you're going to receive one dollar. If you're absent, you will miss it. God has some blessing to your life. You just be faithful. Amen? You don't know. Maybe you will meet that girl. Or she will meet you who can tell but there is a blessing every Sunday every Wednesday or your prayer meeting that is stored for you maybe an encouragement maybe a word of comfort 
Maybe an instruction. Maybe a rebuke that you need. So keep attending on church faithfully. Thank you very much. You may be seated. So I have a problem. Why? Because I owe her how much? Two dollars. Because I told you I'm going to double what I'm going to ask you. So who will lend me two dollars? Because I want to be... No. Two dollars. Can you trust me? You have two dollars? Who has two dollars? Two dollars. I am going to double your money tonight. Okay, you wait. I, I will not need that. Okay, come here, my friend. You stand here. I'm going to pay my debt. <laughs> Blessing. Thank you for trusting me. But keep on attending church faithfully because you don't know what is stored, what God has stored for you. Maybe God is going to instruct you. Maybe God is going to guide you. Maybe you have a problem. He will comfort you. He will strengthen your faith. I don't know. But realize that every day is a day when you are going to receive God's blessing. Open the Bible faithfully. Thank you very much. That's yours. I'm not kidding. Are you following me? I need to pay my debt. Debt. I need four dollars. Please lend me. Come here. I'm not kidding. You stand here. Come on. Four dollars. Four. I need four. Blessing. Thank you. Just imagine if you are going to give every Sunday with that kind of smile. That is God's way. God, that is what God wants us, how He wants us to give. With a <laughs> smile. <laughs> Brother, oh, you, see? He is also smiling. Because he is going to gain two more dollars. Amen. But be faithful. Amen. Don't miss church. Why? Because just imagine you are, if you are not here, you're going to miss the blessing. God has something stored for you every day. Every Sunday. You open your Bible faithfully. He will guide you. He will instruct you. He will rebuke you. He will guide you with His own eyes. Be willing. Thank you very much. You may be seated. So my problem is increasing. But it's good. I need to pay this little boy eight dollars <laughs> I'm starting to lie this who will lend me eight dollars I will double your money come on come on down no more eight dollars oh ten dollars come here come here I have no problem about it I'm rich Wow! The other, I don't have any change. So I'm going to take this $10. Oh, $10. Give it. That's yours. Give your tithes. <laughs> Just imagine. That is the blessing of the Lord. The blessings of the Lord make it rich. And He added no sorrows in it. But if you're going to try to do it yourself, it will pierce your heart with many sorrows. That's yours. <laughs> Who wants to lend me twenty dollars? <laughs> will you trust me?
Lend that kid twenty dollars. I'm going to double that money. Will you trust me? Wait. It means that you don't trust me. Will you trust me? I'm going to give it back. Double. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Do you have twenty dollars? If you don't have, join ten dollars together. Babagal kayo. Kaya tuli minsan pagkatalik talagang pagdating sa pera ma nagkakaya. Sabi niya pambira mo kang scam tayo ni Pastor ah. Eh, isipin mo kung i-scam natin ito, anong mangyayari sa buhay natin? Smile! Okay! That is the way to give! With a smile! I hope everyone that is going to give, they will give it as a smile. God love it what? A cheerful giver. Do you know what is a cheerful giver? When they give, oh, amen! Hey, here. Para kayo nagugulan ka rin. Amen. Blessing? Amen. Blessing ba? Oh, see, thank you for trusting me. You can come down. Listen. Thank you for trusting me. If I'm going to say, okay, son, God is going to pay you what you Wait! Just imagine if I'm going to tell that child and you will realize Pastor Angeles, nagpunta dito sa Cambodia ng scam. <laughs> Baka hindi niyo ako supportahan. I need to pay my death because I promise to give it back. I'm going to give it back. It is not a scam. <laughs> this is Thai baht, 1,000. That is 30. That is 30 dollars. Wait. That is forty dollars. You can go down. <laughs> Amen. Look here. I'm not rich. I just learned to be faithful. Why? Because the God whom I serve is a faithful God. Just imagine if I'm going to not to give him back the money that he loaned to me. But I'm going to leave this place. Yes, it's a joke. We can, we can laugh. But it will leave an impression that that man cannot be trusted. Thank you for trusting me. But the big question is this. Who will trust God? He is faithful. He never tell a lie. One of the greatest promise that was mentioned in the Bible is eternal life. In first in Timothy chapter one verse two, he says, "In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began." He said, give. There are so many applications with that. But in relation to giving money, it is the same principle. When you give, 
He will give it back. Does not man promise when? How much? But He will surely give it more. He was planning to go to Australia. My pastor advised me, not telling me what to do, but just advised me, what is God's plan in your life? Did you enroll in a Bible school? Yes. So when he leads you to enroll to a Bible school, did he want you to finish the Bible school? I said yes. So you decide. According to God's plan in your life. So 1987, I wrote my brother and says, I'm sorry, I cannot go to Australia, although my petition is already approved. Because I want to fulfill what God wants me to do. The life that I was, that was given to God is better. I cannot imagine what God has, really what the God, the Lord has done in my life. Only eternity can tell. Yes, there are so many trials, there are so many problems. Time is that enough to explain and express to you what the Lord has done in my life. But what He promised, He will fulfill it. Why? Because He is a faithful God. He's looking for a church, for an individual who will partner with Him to reach and to feed the 7.8 billion people. You have a little. If that little is going to be given to God, it will be multiplied. Faith promise mission giving principle started in the Macedonian churches. They give so little. But if you are going to account all the money that has been given to mission because of the example of the Macedonian churches, it multiplied to billions of dollars as of now. This church is one of part that was influenced by that Macedonian giving. It's still multiplying right now. The little things that was given by Macedonian churches still multiplying. Why? Because it was given to the hands of a great miracle-making God. So we see the illustration. Lastly, we will see the implementation. Verse 10 to verse 14, it was said, And Jesus said, Make the man sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the man sat down, in number about 5,000. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to the men that were set down, and likewise to the fishes, of the fishes, as much as they would. And they were filled. And when they were, when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragment that was remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together, filled twelve baskets with a fragment of twelve barley loaves, which remained over above unto them that had eaten. If you're going to follow the principle, those fragments that was left was not given to the disciples. The principle follows that the one who gave Receive the fragments. Five loaves becomes twelve basketfuls of fragments. But the implementation is this. The disciple must give the little things that they have by faith. It does not multiply until the disciple walk by faith. Believing that the five loaves can feed the 5,000 men as Jesus Christ instructed. They went forward. It doesn't multiply until it was given to the first man. 
if that five loaves were eaten by the disciples, it will, they will not see the performance of the miracle. They need to walk by faith. Giving mission money is by faith. You don't know when it, how the missionary use it. We just gave it by faith. Believing that God is going to use it for His glory. Give it by faith. Let it walk and reach. And let it multiply as soon as the, this, uh, the, the bread was rich. And the first man reached out. Then the miracle happened. It must be distributed properly. It must reach the people that needs it. It must be given by faith. It must be given obediently. And also it must be given with a clean hand. My friend, we are going to give the bread of life. The people that we are going to minister to will never receive a bread with the dirty hands. Even though how good it is, how well we explain it, even though how we say, how we say, oh, the Lord is so good, He will change your life. But if your life is so dirty, they will not receive it. They will not receive it. Mahatma Gandhi experienced that. The reason why he doesn't believe Christianity is because of the of the the example of the Christian people that he met. Because the people that brought the bread to him have dirty hands. I hope our life will be guided by the gospel as well. Not only to defend it, but to live it. To live it as an example so that as we give and distribute this bread of life that can cure and feed the hungry people, they will enjoy it and receive it with joy. Take that piece of bread out of a clean hand, not with a dirty hands. The conclusion is this. God is bringing you today as a church to a higher level of faith, love, dedication, commitment, so you can see the need and to be part of a great miracle of preaching the world with the gospel of his love. Will you respond like this little child? This little child was willing to be loose, to be led, to be loaded, and to loan. And as the disciple was instructed to give that bread, they give it by faith, in obedience, and with the clean hands. Let us bow down our heads and let us close our eyes. Father God in heaven, we thank you for bringing us together so that we can see the need. We can see the problem so that we can see our inability, the little things that we have so that we can see how our miracle can happen through those little things that we have if we only be given to Jesus Christ, our Lord. I believe there is a lad here who still have these five barrel loaves and two small fishes. Some of them have messed their lives. But still you have grace enough to restore it back. When it is rich and full into your hand, you can perform a great miracles out of them and to be used and to use their lives for your glory. O minister to us as the invitation is given. I pray that they will see what you saw and their lives will be willing like this little child. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.